Hello and welcome to YCS 200 European Edition. I'm here with Matthew Bell. Hey. Good morning, Luke. I'm Luke Whittington. Yeah, I should really announce my own name. I never do that. Oh, really? Oh, this yeah. is Luke Whittington, in case you, in case you didn't know. We can announce each other. Oh, that's, yeah, that's of course. That's the friendly way of doing it, isn't is it? it? Okay, I, it's I don't know. It's way too early in the morning to be friendly right now. It is, it is. However, we are still here with plenty of players fighting for that amazing trophy here in Utrecht for the 200th YCS. Matt, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I, I, I cannot wait to see somebody lift that trophy in the air. I am terrified they're going to drop it. If I'm entirely honest, it'd be like, photo, ah, oh, come yeah. on. Well, but the trophy looks super cool. I'll give you that. I, I will hold it for them if, if, if Actually, you're so Actually, that afraid. happened to uh, one of our high-level players at a national championship. They were taking photos of him with his trophy. <laughs> it fell out of the box. <laughs> yeah, That was a rough good. day. We had to get that replaced. Yeah, but it's not good. It's fun not good. stuff happens. you got to just keep hold of it. you got to keep, keep smiling, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Anyway, so... Um, we've been able to find a pretty interesting matchup for you with a fairly well-known player. You may you may know him. He's Luke Parks, the current European champion. Doesn't know what Pot of Greed does. Doesn't know what Pot of Greed. Yeah, well, no, he doesn't know what Pot of Greed looks like. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, much fairer. He's uh, playing Altergeist this weekend, and he's going to yeah. be facing off against just like 218 other duelists. It's good, quite good shout. Uh, he's playing against uh, Paleozoic Frog deck. Yeah. And the, the matchup right now it's is horrendous. Not, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's um, Altergeist is only winning 33% of this matchup. Um, Recurring, of, of course. Re repeating, of course. 33.33, which is much better than usual we usually get <laughs> for that matchup. Yeah, the Paleoxoic seems to be trouncing um, the, the Altergeist deck, so it'll be interesting to see how Luke uh, plays this. As soon as he was sitting down, he goes, oh, well, I know what I'm playing against because I thought there's no way they're not featuring this guy when I saw him earlier. So it's like... Maybe that extra knowledge gives Luke a little bit of a Possibly. little bit of an edge, but Possibly. it seems like the uh, he's getting out, out grinded by the Paleozoic deck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but both of the decks uh, not something similar, but they have a similar kind of play style, a lot more. So lots of conservative and, and controlling react. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. Uh, as for the other match, the other matchups for Altergeist, um, they're looking pretty strong against almost everything. Uh, apart plus fifty from percent, right? Goki, yeah, everything, everything's like plus fifty. Really, even Goki? I thought that, uh, Altergeist was supposed to be the good matchup, especially no, no, it, now yeah, that Goblin's gone. No, but apparently, um, yeah, they're still doing really well against Goki. Uh, sorry, no, really bad against Goki. Not good. The other way around. Uh, they're really bad against Goki. Okay, Goki's winning a lot. Yeah, I would have thought uh, Altergeist would have been beating Goki. Yeah, but. Um, and then the Sky Striker matchup, in fact, both the pure it's and doing pretty good the, against Pendulum. The, the Trickstar. 81% uh, win ratio yes. versus Pendulum right yeah. now. 81.5, actually. Yeah, yeah. and the, then the Sky Striker match is both pretty hard for, for those as well. Uh, as Sky Striker Trickstar, 29.7. Huh. Yeah, just like the World low. Championship final. On that bombshell. Yeah. Let's, take it, <laughs> let's take it over this morning for our uh, round 10 feature match to Oliver German and Tom Payne. Yeah, welcome guys. Good morning or good morning. What they say in the <laughs> Netherlands is what somebody told me yesterday. We are up bright and early. How are you feeling today? Pretty good. I feel like I should just uh, follow up on Matt's comment about someone dropping the trophy. That mm -hmm. was Jake Quincy. He that didn't was like that he had a fourth place trophy. He didn't want a fourth place one. No, he, he wanted a first so place one. So he didn't one. drop it. He, he didn't drop it, no. Oh my. He just, he just went straight up, smashed it on the floor. Yeah, there goes the pro career, my little friend, Jake Quincy. Yeah, we don't like that behavior. No. But what we do like, of course, is featuring the European champion Luke Parks going up with Altergeist uh, against Wolf Lechte from Germany with Paleozoic Frogs. We've seen this a couple of times uh, where you have, like, David versus Goliath, in a way. You have, like, one player that is really famous, really known, uh, had a big success, coming from big success, sometimes even a string of big successes. And then you have another player that is not quite known yet, but we've seen it more than once in the past that they rise to the occasion and they take down the the uh, favorite going into the match. Yep, and indeed, uh, Matt said that the Paleozoic matchup is favored. Well, according to the stats. Um, so, what would you what would you make uh, of this, knowing that? Honestly, I've, this is not a matchup I've seen happen a lot before. All right. Um, so, one thing that jumped out to me about Luke's deck list is that he's not playing Rivalry of the Warlords, which is mm. quite a popular card. Right. I mean, it doesn't massively influence how the deck plays. It's just a trap. You draw it or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, Wouldn't however, have done much in this matchup. Exactly. It's three cards that would have been pretty useless in his main deck. Yep. So it's good for him that he's not playing it if he'd known he was playing Paleozoic. Uh, on the flip side, because, I mean, 
Wolf is actually running three copies of Rivalry himself. Oh, okay. So he's obviously so. not that bothered by it. But is it in the main deck? Or is uh, it in the main deck. In, in the, the main, main deck. deck. Okay. So Rivalry not going to do so much. Goes and match might. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the meanest things you can do to an Autoguise deck is if they summon Melaseek and stick a Link Karibu on the board, then they have no other Dark Monsters. So if you flip a Gozen match, they just have to sit there. <laughs> yeah. Until, well, until you decide to kill a Link Karibu. All right. That that Which would might not happen. be a position that Luke Parks Definitely wants not. to end up in. All right. So this could go either way. Kind of hard to tell. This could go either way. I feel like going first is a u usually an advantage mm -hmm. in decks that are running a lot of trap cards. And of course, um, as these guys just pointed out, Luke does have the knowledge what his opponent is playing. This happens uh, over the course of longer tournaments. You, you just tend to get up from your seat and just take a quick glance what everybody else. You normally is like ask all your friends, and by yeah. the time you know everyone knows someone. Yeah. And also when you get featured, I mean it's a bit different if you're the European champion, but generally speaking, when you get featured, there's a very good chance that your opponent is playing some something crazy. That's true, yeah. yeah. We saw that yesterday. You can check out all of yesterday's coverage on our YouTube channel. Everything has been archived, so you can go back and watch all the feature matches from yesterday. With that, uh, guys, let's take you to the feature match table and get our game on for round number 10. We need the first thing. So here we got Luke on the left. Generally speaking, very relaxed person, as long as he doesn't have to um, come up with names of drawings that his partner in crime, Jay Quincy, is drawing in our little trivia game. You will see that stuff in between rounds. <laughs> Wolf Lecht, on the other hand, like I said, bit of an underdog going into this match. Um, can't say I remember him doing well like at the German Nationals or something like that, like at a lo more local tournament. I mean, Nationals are still pretty prestigious. Okay, so that, that's looking not like the sort of hand Luke would want to be Ooh. drawing. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's a goal, okay. second hand. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter, go first or second. Um, but he is going second. He is going second. I mean, it's better for him that he's going second because his hand wouldn't have done anything going first. So if he didn't know what he was playing against, would he be like, oh my god, I'm playing against Chainburn? Uh, <laughs> possibly. I still think you you, pr you probably would guess Altergeist. There are other decks that run trap cards I floating around at the moment. So this match might be taking a little bit longer than most of the matches we saw yesterday. I would say so, yeah. There's <laughs> a lot of traps floating around. We actually saw a lot of 2-0s yesterday in our feature match. There were. It, do you? Um, is there something that, that stood out to you where you're like, this is the reason why there were so many 2-0s? Was it just that somebody always knew how the deck was working? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I think some games are 2-1, some games are 2 -0. In the dice roll dependent match, when it's like both decks want to go second, then mm. often we saw the deck that actually got to go second taking the game, so that often leads to a 2-1. Often yeah. the plan of the player is just to say, all right, I'm probably going to lose that game, that's fine, I'll just win the next one when I get to go second, or yeah. when I get to start if I want it's to It's not start. much of a plan when you go into the third game. It's like, a bad plan yeah, if I'm you have to. Lose this one. <laughs> third game, hmm, who cares, oops. So I assume Luke got the, the poke in with Marionetta. Or maybe he didn't. Maybe it just wasn't even worth worth it for 1,600 damage. Yeah. Why would he not attack? Ah, I mean, maybe he might think his marionette is going to lose out to some trap. I think um, Wolf's going to have enough to try and set up uh, a Totally Awesome. And I think the Totally Awesome is just going to get met with Luke's face down Solemn Strike, which right. is not what Wolf's going to want to see. I feel like... Something like Totally Awesome sticking to the board in a matchup like this is really quite strong. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but that's not going to happen, I don't think. <laughs> uh, he's going right. to try. And he's, he's trying, yeah. It's going to be particularly unfortunate because um, normally when you make Totally Awesome, you make it with a frog. Mm -hmm. And then if it gets hit by Solemn Strike, then you get the frog back. But if you make it with two copies of, well, two uh, Paleozoic traps, they're no longer water monsters in the graveyard. So you don't get them back. And that's very sad. It is. So he's using Morella there to send Rivalry of the Warlords to the graveyard. Normally you want to send a trap which is useful in the graveyard, but in this case, a Rivalry of the Warlords is useless in the deck. So you might as well get it out of the deck. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. In, in this first game, like the only thing he's doing with it is giving him another option to, to bring back his traps, right? Yeah. But basically any other trap card yeah, would, would have done the same job, yeah. Um, yeah. So what's he drawn for 10? Drawing a swap frog right here would be very big. It always is. 
But yeah. any any sort of frog. Ah, there we go. There we go. It is the mighty swap frog. I would say that is probably the best draw that he could have picked up right there. As is almost always the case in Paleozoic frogs. I did say this yesterday. I think the win rate of Paleozoic frogs shoots up when Spot Frog is involved. So I'm trying to get the cards on the uh, on the table because the the hand of Wolf Lechter is not very <laughs> interesting at the it moment. It is empty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Luke's deciding. He's got a number of possible responses. He might want to use Ash on the Swap Frog. He might want to use his face down protocol on the Swap Frog. You might want to use Solemn Strike on the Swap Frog. Um, but generally, the Swap Frog being around is good because somehow it's going to end up either under the Toad or in the graveyard before the Toad is made. So when the Toad gets hit with Solemn Strike, he just gets the Swap Frog back for free. Yeah. So that Swap Frog is going to eat an Ash and then effectively eat a Solemn Strike it's just for the one card, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah, I was about to say. It's just he would have been left with very little if he hadn't drawn the Swap Frog. But now he has drawn the Swap Frog. I... I I guess this gets hit with Solemn Strike. I don't know. Yeah. It's a bit sad, this, because you kind of just know they're going to make another Toad yeah. very shortly anyway. It's one of the um, situations where, like, I, I don't really have a you, choice. You have to strike it now, because otherwise it's it's just going to negate something else, and you're almost certainly just going to end up using the Strike on it later. I think, I think we got it. We got the cards got on it. the table for Wolf. So Wolf has got the Gozen match, um, which... Oddly enough, will actually slow the old guy's deck down. I mean, old guy's doesn't go very fast anyway, but it slows it down even more because <laughs> all the old guy's monsters like have different attributes. Throwing a stone at a snail—that's animal Indeed. cruelty. So hopefully, uh, Wolf has added the swap frog back. So now he's just going to start activating some traps in order to trigger mm. the Paleozoic traps in his graveyard. But so far, he's got a pretty good understanding of his deck. There's yep. Nothing yeah, I like, like the fact that he sent rivalry to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, there wasn't anything else. It was the worst draw in his deck, so you get right. rid of it. So we saw Luke there just chaining the protocol, because against Paleozoic, even if you chain a trap card, they can bring back one of theirs. Right. So if you chain a trap card to their trap card, they can still bring back a yep. Paleozoic trap, but it means you've already activated it. So you need to, you, you've got it on the field now. So if you'd waited to activate it at another point, you might have given them a free trap. But if you chain it to their trap, then they don't end up with more. Right. So that was the correct play by. That by was Luke. yeah. That was a nice play. Even though it didn't help. Even him. though it's not going, it might not. Yeah. Have any impact. But it's something to take note of. Yeah. Uh, that, that can make a bit of a difference when you're in a very close match. Indeed. Yeah. It every definitely every tiny bit can count. Every tiny bit can count. No, that swap frog draw was very big though. Yeah. Because I'm not sure we would have seen uh, Wolf, Wolf be able to make, comeback like that, make yeah. the second toad without it, and this toad, it looks like, is going to stick, and a toad sticking is pretty huge. <coughs> yeah, you, you can't be happy when, when be that happy. card suddenly hits the, the field after somebody just said five. So Luke Park is running low on resources here. He's got uh, he's got a few cards in his hand. Yeah, two. <laughs> in this double ash. I think he just drew a third card. Not yeah. what he wanted to see. Toad as well is so powerful, especially in a situation like this, where if he chooses to negate the impermanence, he will actually get the impermanence. Hmm. Um, so I think we're beginning to see just how why this matchup is going to be so hard. Once that Toad comes down, yeah. I mean, once Toad comes down against any deck, it's it's hard. It's, hard. Yeah. it's an uphill battle, but. More if so for Altergeist. If you're playing Altergeist, I think you the problem is that you often give your opponent enough time to get the Toad up. I assume he's going to take his opponent's impermanence. Yeah, so he's chosen to um, send the Swap Frog rather than the Toad to the graveyard, which is a pretty sensible decision, because I think if the Toad was sent to the graveyard, that well, if he's sending the Swap Frog, that mm -hmm. if the Toad dies then it's just going to get the Swap Frog back anyway. Yeah. So you and might as well just... And he does have a second one, so... Uh, this, that's coming out of the deck from yeah. the effect of Toad. It's just adding more insult to injury here. At least that's how it feels to me. Like, Luke's face isn't really giving it away, but he doesn't look super happy about yeah, this. Yeah, I wouldn't be very happy. I mean, he's just like... That Ash is... is it's so... Almost nothing, but he's, 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 there's no better use for it. Yeah, which is so weird because usually it's such a clutch card, it's so important. I mean, it, it is, it's a bit of a hit or miss card in matchups like this because they have four extreme. Well, so Wolf is playing one card of Demise, three Pot of Desires. 
So if you hit one of those with Ash, yeah, that's yeah. that's great. It's definitely much better than what but happened. Otherwise, here. any almost any other like card, it's so unimpactful because Swap Frog, you Ash it, they just bring it back to their hand and play again another turn. Um, or Ashing a Toad is cut. They're like they're getting stuff for free, and he's yeah, in fact that just chosen is it, to pack yeah. up. Luke Fox says, "Okay, I, ca I can't win this anymore. It's, it's too much of an uphill battle." So now he's accessing his side deck, and he's immediately looking for a couple of traps here going to the front. That looks to me like Waking the Dragon. What do you think about Waking the Dragon in this match? I don't know if you have to be Waking the Dragon, you're expecting your opponent to kill for you. Um, so Luke's doing this thing which is often called smoke screening, yep. where you mix your main deck and your side deck. And then you, and just then you take out the cards that you cards. want. So we see him move Mind Control to the front. Not that Mind Crush. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Mind cr Crush. Uh, yeah, so smokes, the purpose of smoke screening is to not let your opponent know how many cards you're siding in yeah. and or if Or if any at all. It's pretty. Yeah, you, you can't just make it look like you're siding in a c bunch of cards and you just get out the entire side deck that he just moved it, in. It requires you to have a good knowledge of your main and side deck. Yeah, but. I you think would expect Luke to do that? Yeah, you would expect most like veterans um, to have tested so much that they know exactly what they're The only issue is if your like. list is like, if you've changed like one or two cards mm. the night before, you have to know exactly the 40 cards. And that's what you do in between rounds. I mean, that's, that's not crucial. Uh, like if between rounds, uh, game one and two, that's not super crucial. That's true, yeah. It so doesn't actually matter. You only need to bring a second copy of your deck of list and then yeah. look at it in between yeah, rounds. Yeah, well, you could bring a second copy of a deck list. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way to go. Just some more pro advice here. Pro advice, Molly. <laughs> yeah, I got some. I got some. So what do we think? Not not much though. So I'm guessing we're gonna see more spell. So uh, yeah, he, Wolf's he was got some copies of Heavy Storm Duster, which mm -hmm. I could definitely see coming in, and possibly even evenly matched if he's expecting Luke to go first. Uh, those would be my guesses for what's being sided in. We would be expecting Luke to go first. Siding out the rivalry and the mistake, probably right. from the trap lineup, because those aren't very impactful. So, Wolf Lechte is just one win away from... I, I was talking about that David versus Goliath thing. He Currently, he's in a hitting, pretty good position. Hitting Luke with the, the slingshot. Yeah, exactly. Down. That was what I was thinking about. Yeah. So, I'm guessing Luke will have rotated out the shared ride, and it looked like he was rotating out the Mind Crush. Yeah, the Imperial Order as well. And the Imperial Order, yeah. Yep. And it looked like he was putting in Waking the Dragon. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure Paleozoic is really a deck that proactively destroys your spells and traps. I mean, they do have the... Um, I mean... The Leon, no, what's it called? But what about Evenly Matched? No, it doesn't destroy Evenly it's Matched banished. doesn't trigger it because it gets banished face yeah, down. So much Waking the Dragon is still triggered if it's banished. Oh, is it? But, but not face down. No, no, nothing. Basically, nothing is triggered if it's banished face okay. down. There is, fun fact for you, one Yu-Gi-Oh card in the game which is triggered when it is returned from the field to the deck. Some weird serpent princess thing. <laughs> I don't. I you don't even know what it does. That's, that's if if we uh, up our number of trivia games, that might be one of the trivia questions. I don't then. even know that it's like serpentine <coughs> princess or something. Uh, but basically, nothing is triggered from the deck. Yeah, very few things. Players are triggered when players good cards are triggered. getting shuffled back into the deck. Right, all trap card lineup for Wolf Lechter, who's well, going yeah. second. <laughs> that's what he likes to see. 28 trap cards in his main deck. Yeah. Whereas uh, Luke Parks, uh, hand is still loading in here. So mm. are we going to see a bit of a better hand from Luke? Yeah. Uh, those look like Melaseeks in his hand. Maybe he's got two Melaseeks. Uh, I can definitely see an Altergeist Manifestation. Oh, they were Multifakers. Triple Multifaker and a Melaseek. Ooh, I didn't I didn't make out that w there was uh, three times the same card. I, I did see, like, twins, but not triplets. <laughs> so... Is you want to see the multi-faker. I'm not sure you want to see quite three multi-fakers. So there's no interaction for Wolf Lechter in uh, his hand? Have, there is no interaction in his deck, really. For yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pointing out the obvious, but yeah, you're going just next level here. Next level. I don't think he's going to interrupt. I mean, no one's really going to interrupt an guys player on their first turn anyway. Um, so Luke there <laughs> putting that Melaseek in the graveyard. So this is actually a new trick that Link Karibo has given mm -hmm. to the Altergeist deck. So there was, there is a card called um, Clara and Rushka, uh, like the Ventriloquist duo. Mm -hmm. So basically the point of either of these cards is to link away the Melaseek to get it in the graveyard immediately so you can activate its search effect. 
Did but that can only be Link Summon during main phase two. Just drew into a Pot of Desires. Pot of Desires is a good one. Yeah, it's also uh, very often it's a very good top deck. Here we quickly see what's picking banished. There's definitely one swap frog. One swap frog. As long as you don't okay. see Three swap too frogs. many frogs. <laughs> I think two Ronin Totens is even scarier, actually. Okay. Because those are the ones one. which come back from the grave. But yeah, you normally run two just for this purpose. And still only trap cards in his hand. So we can see the oh, sorry, two one goes and match. Uh, and goes and match again is a card which is very irritating for the... Altergeist deck, because all of their monsters are different attributes. The problem for our viewers is again that they are not 100% sure if that is just um, just, just you being snarky basically, or you being serious here. What? That it's irritating? Yeah, irritating in the sense that it is actually really good against this deck. Well, you can decide what you see when you see it. When you see it send like three monsters from his field to the graveyard. Okay, so that's what you mean by irritating in this, it's irritating. In this case. It's definitely annoying. Um, so you can see so all when, when is the best moment to pop it? When is the best moment to flip it? I would I would just flip it immediately because otherwise you risk them link summoning mm. Altergeist Hexia, and so Hexia can negate. So you're saying Wolf cards. needs to pull the trigger now? I'm expecting to see it just flipped in the draw phase, standby phase or draw phase. Indeed, I don't even know if you're allowed to play cards in the draw phase. You are. I mean, players often do. Yes, you are. You sure? Yeah, I'm 100% sure. I wrote the rules at one point. You wrote the rules? Yeah, then Kevin Tivart says you're not allowed to touch any more tournaments. Then I refrain from writing the rules. Okay. Right, so he's going to flip it here. That's what we're maybe. guessing. Uh, maybe. I mean, it's, it's what I would do. I'm not sure it's... You might just try and wait and see if your opponent plays yet another monster to be but eaten but up by... Isn't that risky then? It is perhaps a bit greedy, because if they summon Silquitas, they could bounce it. So he's going to play Morella first, mm -hmm. uh, because so he's going to put some Paleozoic Trap cards in his graveyard to trigger the... Uh, well, to, to trigger to, to when he back flips if he wants goes to, yeah. in match. Okay. Uh, so he might just send Lost Wind here and wait and see if Luke is going to Link Summon first, and then he can get the Lost Wind back from the graveyard for free, but it looks like he's sending a Dynamiscus just to put another Paleozoic Trap in the grave. Hmm. All right, so that works. And do we know what are his other <coughs> face downs? Yes, we do. Um, he's got a heavy storm dust that goes and match. Um, uh, Morello that we just saw is now gone. Olenoides and another goes and match. So I can't really see a reason why you would flip the Morello if you weren't just going to flip the goes and match, unless it was just kind of out of habit. Um, because you're not going to. It would be a really weird habit to test that. Well, just to do it in the standby phase, you know, just to All get right. the traps in the grave. Because you want the traps in the grave before you activate any yeah. of your other traps. And then, but the question is, goes and match is a card where you can activate it later, always, yeah. if you want to. Okay, so he just did that, triggers. So this is, it looks actually, Luke having that double Melaseek on the board is going to be very... Melaseek is a card which gives the Altergeist deck outs to a lot of things that they shouldn't be able to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, like this goes and match. So it can attack directly, and when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, it... Uh, you, you can, can just choose a card on the field and yeah. send it to the grave. So it gives it a lot of outs. It's, it's one of the most important cards in the Altergeist deck. How can Wolf Lechte uh, stop it from attacking here? Uh, I, I don't, don't think he can. No, I don't, I don't see anything here. Uh, nothing in his hand, of course, even though most of the time the hand can't really stop attacks. Except for Battle Fader, which Battle Fader, yeah. made a memorable appearance in a feature match in Prague a few years ago. That was also Jay Quincy, by the way. So many, okay. so many highlights of Jay Quincy, actually. I don't think he can. So maybe that's the first one's going to send the Gozen match to the graveyard, and then we'll see if the second one hits the other Gozen match mm -hmm. or not. Um, unless he's got some way to stop it, but I don't I know. I don't see... Well, he's, he could use Heavy Storm Duster to destroy... Uh, not Heavy Storm Duster. Well, he could use Heavy Storm Duster. He could use Paleozoic Olenodes to destroy the Spin Manifestation, yeah. which is attached to the first Melody. Okay, so, so he gets rid of one. That gets rid of one. The second one, I would assume, will hit the Gozen match, but unfortunately for Luke... There's a second one there's waiting. There's a second Gozen match waiting in the wings. Oof, that might be even more devastating then. Like, he's he's got rid of that card, he thinks, now I'm free to do whatever, and then suddenly the second one gets popped. Yeah, that would be quite annoying, because especially in the situation where Luke's got a lot of monsters in his hand. Yeah. Because he's just not going to be able to use any of them. <laughs> a lot, as in all cards all are monsters. Cards. I mean, he might... Wolf might even choose to flip it, 
before Luke's main phase two, which would prevent him from summoning. You, he just won't be able to use any of the cards in his hand, hmm. which is really not a situation you want to be in. And then you would have to get rid of the monster, which should not be a problem with two monsters uh, on the field of your own. Indeed. So he's chosen not to. But now he's going to flip it, right? Uh, he might flip it in the end phase. Um, I think he's going to flip it now. Come on, do it. Flip, flip, you see flip. flip it? <laughs> I'm just going to get... I mean, you, this is a sort of situation where you might sort of... <laughs> I'm going to get the crowd to start a chance. That you haven't flipped it yet. There we go. Woo! So Second copy activated. I, I don't know why you would hold it and then flip he, it. He was waiting for the crowd to cheer him on. Oh, and everybody go, flip, flip, flip. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's still too early for them. It's still too early in yeah. the day, Ollie. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't have this... Uh, my breakfast is Red Bull with more Red Bull. But I mean, the thing is, in this situation. Oh, sorry, I, I learned yesterday we got we got sponsorship by Powerade, so I want to correct that. <laughs> he he's allowed Luke to essentially trade the marionetta in his hand for a trap from his deck, and the marionetta in his hand couldn't have done anything. Mm. Um, so yeah, so so, so you're saying possibly flipping it earlier flipping it in earlier. this situation would have benefited him because Luke's got so many monsters in his hand. I mean, normally the old guy's deck runs quite low on monsters, yeah. so he's only running like. Is, is there a situation 12, 13? where the element of surprise when your opponent is about to play a second card and you, you then flip the ghost match is, is such an advantage that it's better to hold it back? Um, I mean, you're you're kind of weighing up the value of um, the extra monster being killed. Mm. Uh, against the sort of security of them not being able to do anything sneaky. Yeah. So the ho the longer you hold it, you might get more value if it sends more cards uh, from the field to the grave. But you you lose out like a trade like that. That heavy storm duster would still have been face down. Yeah. Um, and Luke would have just had the second copy of Marionetta in his hand. I mean, he's already got more monsters than he's going to be able to use. So. So now I Wolf Lichter is able to. Go toading again. Yep. And once this this toad is almost certainly going to stick, I can't see anything in Luke's hand to deal with the toad. So, I mean, realistically, this goes in match is really shutting Luke down. Um, he attacks over. It's very irritating, Metal seek. as I said. The attack? No, the, card, the, the, goes, uh, in the goes in match. Okay, that's what I thought. It's just, really hurt. Just double checking. Me. All right, so it's interesting because Wolf Lechter only really has two, three cards. Um, here with the Gozen match and the Toad. Yet another monster, but doesn't do much. But one Gozen match is worth. One Gozen match is worth like I mean, five cards by Luke here. Well, a Go Gozen match plus Toad is one of the closest mm. things to an FTK, which doesn't kill your opponent. I would is, say. is there a thing? Ah, okay. It's a it's a first turn combo that doesn't. Indeed, it's a first turn combo. Yeah. That would be an FTC. <laughs> but yeah. But so this is as close as Wolf Lechter is ever going to get to being a perfect position to just take down one of the greats. Uh, Luke well, I mean, maybe next turn he'll be in an even better position. Yeah, for the time being. That is what Toad does, it steamrolls. If, if somebody would have told him at the start of the tournament, hey, you're going to be in day two, you're going to be playing against the European champion, both of you are on a really respectable record, I think they are 7-1-1, if I'm not mistaken, I can look that up. And... Um, yeah, then you're going to beat him in a feature match. He would have said, oh my god, sign me up for this tournament. Um, my usual choice with Toad, 711. I mean, it's the fairly standard choice, is to summon the Dupe Frog. Uh, because that prevents any of your other monsters from being attacked over while Dupe Frog is on the field. But, I mean, in this situation, it, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, but it'd be interesting to talk about why he's done that. I don't really know why he's done that. Because if he summons the dupe if he'd summoned the dupe frog here, then Luke wouldn't have been able to attack over either the dupe frog or the So he wouldn't have he just he mm. just would have had a dupe frog on the field because yeah. Luke wouldn't have been able to attack it. And Luke wouldn't have been able to attack his Paleozoic trap either because Dupe Frog prevents you from attacking monsters that are not itself. So one of the old school locks was to have two dupe frogs on the field? Yeah. And then your opponent couldn't attack. It's a little, little while ago. I mean, it still comes up every now and again because yeah. Dupe Frog is a card that's played. And, uh, you <laughs> know, I mean, Dupe Frog not, is a card. not being able to attack your opponent can come in handy. I mean, normally in the situation where the Paleozoic player has two Dupe Frogs on the field, they're, they're winning anyway. Um, yeah. But. 
you know, it, every every little helps, and, a, and an interaction which stops your opponent from attacking you can be helpful. Same thing with two Marauding Captains. Marauding Captain, a very old card that recently saw some play in Goki. Yeah. But you can't do that anymore. So, get rid of the... So, we should... Can totally we double-check awesome. the text on um, Inspector Border? Because it's got a lot of text. It does. Uh, some people have been wondering why he's playing that card. Uh, I assume it's because there wasn't anything better in his side deck. Yeah, I, I, I would actually guess the same thing. It's got 2,000 attack. It has yeah. a relatively irritating effect. Neither player can activate monster effects unless the number of monster effects that player has previously activated that turn is less than the number of monster card types currently on the field. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So the question here was, so what's kind of going on in this confusing chain is Toad can activate its effect. Mm -hmm. And it did. It was negated by strike. Toad can activate its effect, but it was negated by strike. And then you'd think, okay, so the activation was negated. So in fact, you could activate another monster effect, but Toad is no longer on the field. Yeah. So there's no uh, and there's no card types on the field, so you don't you know you went you had one ac monster activation, you yeah. tried it, it failed. So you'd think maybe I still have one monster activation, but now you don't. You now have zero monster activations. <laughs> right. Um but it doesn't matter because the Paleozoics are traps. And then you make the Toad. They don't care about monster effects on top of that. They don't e mind. Even though that's not They also don't here. care about monster effects. They're yeah. just spitting in the face of Inspector Border. How, how important is that being unaffected by monster effects? Because quite often I don't feel like it's incredibly relevant. Um, at the moment it's not coming up too much. Paleozoic is normally a deck which wins with its trap cards. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just turn the Paleozoics into toads as fast as possible. But in the past it's been a very relevant thing. Okay. That if you could flip a Wabaku. And that is that's it. Enough for Luke to back up. Wolf Lechte in the role of David going up against Goliath in the form of Luke Parks, and he wins the first feature match of the day. Quite an explosive start. Definitely not the start that Luke Parks was imagining for himself. Let's talk about it in our post match analysis. Yeah, so sometimes the heart of the underdog can overcome uh, even the biggest of favorites the in the room. Heart of the underdog room. and the, the fa favorable matchup. Yeah, I didn't didn't couldn't come up with a Yu-Gi-Oh card in, in just the second that I was preparing this. And uh, but but well done, well done indeed to Wolf Lechte, uh, going up with Paleozoic Frogs. We had Paleozoic Frogs on the stream yesterday. Couple of plays where we weren't 100% sure if we agreed with them. Um, I think there was nothing where we were like, okay, I would have definitely done this differently. Yeah, the only thing. I would have done possibly differently is shotgunning the second Gozen match before Luke summoned right. the Marionetta. Yeah, so so that's like the only little dent. But I mean, it's it's a it's not necessarily a right or wrong play. That's sort of there's too much going on. Yeah. You don't know. What, I know what Luke's got in his hand, and I know activating the Gozen match just stops him doing anything. Yeah. Um, and I, but on the other hand, I think that Luke Parks is not going to be like too nonplussed about this whole thing. Basically, he sat down, he was called for the feature match, he saw the opponent, and he was immediately like, I know what's going to happen here. I, I don't know, because I don't know if, if people... I mean, we, we heard from Matt that Paleozoic's been beating Altergeist, but it's not a matchup that I've practiced, and it's not yeah. one that I've seen a lot before, so Luke might not be aware that it's such a horrible matchup. I mean, he might have figured it out yeah. <laughs> when Gozen match came down. Well, on, on the bright side, he's definitely... He's definitely um, awake now after that wake-up call in, in form Indeed, of that match. Yeah. We've had a couple of pro players that, that showed up late. Also yesterday, by the way. This is the reason why Eugen Hyde and Joshua Schmidt started with a, with a round one loss. They just didn't show up on time yesterday. Um, the, the story goes that Eugen was showering for 45 minutes. <laughs> you, can, you may ask him about that at the next event. <laughs> so uh, all of this is part of the preparation for these larger tournaments. Like, yeah. How important is it to get a good night's sleep for Sunday? I mean, my favorite thing is to pre-register. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite thing. Maybe that's a bit strong. But it's something that I do uh, because it's very easy otherwise to stay up late, think very hard about what you're going to do in your deck and maybe make some changes. Whereas yeah. the deck that you've come with already is probably one that you've put a lot more thought into. Usually it is, yeah. I, I don't have a lot of stories where somebody's like, I switched my deck Friday night, signed up, Sleeved up on Saturday morning, and now I'm going all the way. This is very rarely the case. I think I think the fear is that because you're around so many other players and you're going to play some games that someone might come up and tell you this cool idea yeah. and then you want yeah. to slot it in. But like I said, I don't feel like it's happening very often. 
Yeah. Right, guys, this match was over somewhat quickly, so we do have a little bit of time. Um, I can just show you the top tables at, uh, at the start of the day, start of the third day here in Utrecht for us, second day of competition. This is what the very top of the field looks like. Who Actually, would have said, look at that, Burning <laughs> Abyss against Pendulum on table one. Yeah, that's that's definitely not what we would have expected. Sakai, as we actually featured yesterday with his Pendulum deck, um, did quite well there, obviously, because he's undefeated. Or, or at least the table one, he should be undefeated. Um, but even though if you leave that out, we'd see a couple of different decks. Um, yeah. Sky Striker, Trickster. A lot, a lot of Sky Striker. Goki. Um, granted. Sky Striker Pure is winning out in terms of representatives on the yeah. top tables. Which is sure. surprising because very often when there's one deck that is like the most represented in the field, there are a lot of other decks that are sneaking in there. Uh, here's Bold and Temnik, uh, our first feature match yesterday morning uh, on table number six. And uh, then we see True Draco, Adrian Dursun. Uh, did we feature him? Uh, no, he had a deck profile. Right, We I just remember we did some coverage stuff with him. And then the first Greek player, not that surprising because I keep mentioning this. Uh, Greek players doing really well on the international scene, just as well as the Italians. Fabio Zucato, Pierluigi Sorrentino. Both of these guys still very much in competition. We're just going to take a quick look at the top 20 tables. These are tables 11 to 15. Temiskitsis. Eric Hosbeck, two more Greek guys so that Temis we know. we did feature yesterday. Yep. And, um, yeah, again, Sky Striker, but not as much Sky Striker as we saw at the very top tables. A uh, bit of True Draco and a bit of Altergeist and in there. There's six Sky Striker pure in that in that five tables. That's, I'd say that's quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. I give you that. <laughs> and then six to, out of ten. To round out the top 20, uh, we, <laughs> we see some more Sky Striker. However, there's also Altergeist again present. Um, Peter Zurich Frogs, that's our feature match here. Luke Parks against Wolf Lechter. Uh, they were table 19. And then yet another Greek player, George Apostolidis, with True Draco going up against Alessio Giordani. On he's table number 20. Making it your challenge to pronounce all the Greek names. Uh, uh, he's one of those guys that's very forthcoming because his first name is not George. It's, uh, I think it's Georgios, or like the Greek version of George, basically. So he's just, he's just consciously changing his name to make it easier for us because he's listed very as nice George here. And we also have for the first time ever this weekend the country breakdown. This is what it looked like at the start of the day. Um, Germans always have the most. No, actually, I want to give a shout out to the strong showing by the Netherlands. 471 is is quite a lot for a country that is not that large. Not that large. Not yeah. that large. Small, in fact. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could go as far as saying it's small. I would say that Belgium is small, and and still they they uh, sent 114. So um, quite diverse in, in that regard. I mean, Germany, we mentioned that yesterday, that Utrecht is a good location just because western border of Germany and Utrecht, that's like a one and a half hour uh, car ride. Or and a six hour Yeah, from the train. other side of the country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if your flight happens to get cancelled in the middle of the night and you decide that, okay, I'm now going to take the train, that's also an option when you're from Berlin and just seven short hours later you're going to show up in Utrecht bright and early to do coverage for the next uh, 48 hours. Even more, actually. It's more than 48 and this is what day number two looks like. Uh, Germany was able to cling to that lead, but then again, we, we saw that 800 players came, 150 is still standing. That's Italy suddenly in number and two. They jumped up. They jumped up quite a bit. I, I Sorry, I forgot how many Italians we had at the start of the day. 119. This is round one again. And f out of those 119, 59. Every second Italian still in competition. I think what that's telling you is, if you want to do better at Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, you should move to Italy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to be the new advertising campaign for Italy. Come to Italy, learn to play Yu-Gi-Oh. That's what you do. When we show you the deck breakdowns, we're like, these are the decks that are doing well. You should play this deck. Yeah. So we show you the country breakdowns. The take-home message is... Yeah, you move to, to Italy. This, yeah, you move to Italy and you play a certain deck, and then suddenly you do really well at these tournaments. Well, speaking of decks, let's quickly bring that up as well, guys. This is the deck breakdown at the start of day one. Sky Striker Pure, we said it. In number one, um, almost twice as many copies as the next po most popular deck, which is True Draco. Uh, the big surprise here, we mentioned it yesterday a couple of times, Goki. Uh, we at were the bottom. We were expecting a lot more Goki. I actually spoke to Christopher Nielsen about this um, yesterday evening in the hotel lobby. And he said that 
feels like Go they tried to play, make Goki work. They said it's really good. They just wanted to find an even stronger combo, and they really couldn't. That, that just makes it even more consistent. And he said sometimes you do lose to a hand trap, and there's like nowhere to go from there. Yeah, I think the Invoker really made it easier to get stopped by hand traps. Because Invoker was, you could use, just chuck out any level threes you mm. wanted, and then that did the trick. But now you have to have more specific cards. Right. So today's top card looks very different. Um, the most surprising thing for me is yesterday we were, we were touting that, um, that Burning Abyss is going to go up in numbers. Uh, because I wasn't. Relative, I was. You were. I was, yeah. Okay, just throw me under just the bus. Just throw here. you under the bus yeah. or the train. <laughs> so we th I thought that Burning Abyss is going to go up in relative it's, numbers it's, because it's, very, very often we see players really know the ins and outs of Burning Abyss, so they do really well with that deck. That was not the case. It's one of those rare moments where the top four decks at the start of the day are the same top four decks at the start of day one. In fact, the top five decks uh, are in the exact same order as they were in the start of the deck. However, Goki is Goki's moving up in relative numbers. Up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's now looking at uh, fifth place. Yeah. Dinosaur Burning Abyss got kicked out of our top seven decks and Sky Striker Trickstar and Paleozoic Frogs are now sneaking up those numbers. But still 61 other decks, so that means there are a couple of decks that have been played either seven times or less. So that means even on day two, we got a pretty diverse field. That is, yeah, 61 small represented decks. It's yeah. Pretty interesting. So it's going to be very interesting to see if Sky Striker Pure is going to be able to take the cake at the, the, at the end of the day. It seems like they are well positioned. Also, when we looked at the top 20 tables, there was a Sky Striker on almost every single table. Yeah, I mean, at this point, just by sheer numbers, yeah, you'd, they, you'd they might be have guessing that they're going to take... Might have strength in numbers this weekend. All right, guys, with that, that was a lot of analysis. We're going to take a quick break and take you over to Luke and Matt for an interview with the winner. Oh, actually, it's the loser <laughs> of the round. That's something new. Here they are with Luke Parks. Thank you very much, Ollie. Uh, yes, our winner, Wolf, uh, did, did not wish to have an interview, uh, and Luke Parks was telling us a whole lot about the game, so we decided to get him on. Say, hey, Luke, come on, come on over and tell us a bit about it. Right in. All right. Hello. Last the last time you were here on on this stage, right here, you were lifting a trophy up. Yeah, I won that time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a bit different. Oh, tell, tell 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 us about it, mate. We were talking just before the match that you only have like a thirty three percent chance of winning that match up anyway, and then you didn't open the best. Yeah, it's a pretty hard matchup. If you go first, you just have to like flip your protocols and stuff in the end phase, so they can't bring back Paleo. So that yeah. would have been good. But I lost the roll. Uh, he rolled a five and rolled first, so I was kind of like, I pretty confident I was going to lose the roll and I lost the roll so that was fine yeah. um, I thought I'd nearly got back into game 2 when I had strike I was like mm -hmm. he's going to flip another paleo trap as long as it's not the MST one which I didn't think it was because he'd done it in the end phase brings back a paleo I strike the summon of the toad and then he gets nothing back but his draw for turn was swap frog which just like absolutely annihilated me and I like, had no chance after that I was like oh yeah okay um, yeah. I can draw a a million cards and it doesn't do anything because all my good cards are trap cards and yeah. he gets two frogs before I get a trap card um, and then game two I went first and I opened triple multi faker melu seek and yeah. the manifestation I thought it's bad but like, I might be able to play out of it as long as these traps aren't insane um, so like, I just set up the double melu seek for goes and match but then he had double goes and match MST yeah. or paleozoic MST, I don't know what it is. Yeah. So yeah, there wasn't really much I could do. I think if I watch it back over, maybe I could have done something with the impermanence double ash, like different on the swap frog, but I don't know if there was like any way for me to actually win that game. I don't think you should beat yourself up too hard on that one, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. I've just got to like avoid rogue for the next two rounds and beat yeah. two Sky Striker decks, hopefully. Yeah, I just, yeah. as I say, the, the win rate really didn't put you in yeah, favour. It's, it's not a good match at all. Yeah. And he played well, so like... It's, yeah, exactly. That's what, um, we, we definitely shouldn't take it away from Wolf, but he actually played his deck Yeah, he has a favourable matchup, to, and he's so. going to take advantage of every hole he can find, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Fair play to him. Um, but you said you want to grab two Sky Strikers, but your Sky Striker matchup actually, collectively across the whole tournament, seems to be pretty bad, but you seem to think otherwise of that. Do you want to give a bit of thoughts onto it? Uh, yeah, so, like, we were building the deck, and, like, I decided that... You are. They saw it game once, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I decided that Shared Ride was just, like, better than every trap card in my deck. So no matter what I was playing, I was maining three yep. Shared Ride. 
mm. and even though it's not a trap you can draw like multi faker or hand traps and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and like the matchup is like just ridiculously good because if you draw shared ride they have to skip their turn you just have to make sure you, they bait ash with either like spoofing or multi faker or something like yeah. you can even just have protocol on a monster and just negate the ash um, and if that resolves you win the game because if you summon a multi faker and summon a mellow seek in the end phase you've just won the game because you make like double hex to your marionette and next turn and just yeah. kill them yeah at that point there's Honestly, not much they can do so I think this guy's dragon match is pretty good so that's and you can actually... also just sack them with village oh <laughs> yeah that, you also that, that have, works yeah, that works village. as well yeah um, no that's it's... super interesting to hear you talk about the matchup even though it appears unfavorable for everyone else it just seems to sound like everyone else is playing the matchup wrong yeah like not the first always... time we've heard this on the stream we also had the pendulum guy yesterday who was saying the same thing I don't know, it's just like how the games evolve. Like a lot of people just don't like trap decks. Yeah, and, that's true. Yeah. And they're like, spell decks are cool, but I don't like trap decks. And I was like, I don't know, like it's one of those things where like you have more starters than they do, like than Sky Striker, but yeah. like when you don't have a starter, your deck does more because you have good trap cards and they don't. You actually have it um, uh, this, like real disruption. Yeah, you have real like, actual playable cards. Yeah, trap card, um, like trap cards nowadays are very like very very strong. We, we went through a lull of trap cards not being that strong. I don't actually think that's the case. I think from design perspective, the problem is is everything else got so much better and traps didn't move. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Rel that's what I should have said. Really, the relative strength of trap cards. That was that was the problem, and of course the power level of trap cards have been ramped up now to things we've got evenly matched infinite impermanence, yeah. which has double double synergy for example and things like altergeists mm -hmm. but just everything else yeah. essentially just got pushed a little bit further a little bit further and then it's like hey that mirror force is not doing as much as it used to oh yeah. we killed all my burning abyss monsters that seems like a good time Treadle tribute not good against cosmo just lots of stuff like that yeah yeah i can't believe that guy's back at three and no one's playing it it's insane yeah. Treadle tribute yeah. oh we back saw, in the day when you were like it's not like mega popular I was wish it? I'd set infinite permanence in the column of Gozo match though. That would have been sick. 50-50 leaves. That, that would have worked. Oh, never mind. That would have yeah. worked. I really like the deck. Um, Bowden built most of it. I think like, the Shared Rider was my idea, but it was not mainly his deck. Yeah. He played really well at World Championships, actually. When you yeah. when, when I watched for his games, they were very entertaining. And he was always he always knew exactly what he was doing at any given point. Yeah, he was um, really well tested. Yeah, I you, watched him you play could tell. He Gali knew in the yeah. top eight as well. And Gali wasn't having the best time, but it's just like, yeah, just picking him apart. Yeah. yeah. Um, really good couple of matches. Speaking of inside. the World Championships, tell us a little bit about it. What, how, how, how was it? Um, oh, I, I loved it. It was really, really enjoyable. Uh, it probably wasn't my best event, um, but like, yeah, like it's hard to compete in like an event where I didn't know what everyone was playing. Yeah. Um, there's like 30 people in the room. On paper, the best deck was Goki, so I just mm -hmm. built my Goki deck to beat the mirror, and then just didn't play any mirrors. Yeah. And I got destroyed. All right. But it was like high risk, high reward. And me and Gally played card for card the same deck. I'd tested yeah. way more than he did. But like, obviously, he just got more favorable matchups and he yeah. topped. So like, it, it, was, like, it was a good deck. It just was unfortunate. The, the World Championships is a really fun kind of format. Not just the, 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 the cards being played, but the way that there's such a small number of really, really skilled players in one tournament is yeah. just really Joshua weird. Joshua Smith was actually saying uh, when we were there, he goes, like, the thing with World Championships is that a YCS you'd maybe only play like two of these kinds of matches throughout the whole tournament yeah. and your whole tournament experience at Worlds is oh it's that guy who's won X, Y and Z it's this yeah. guy who's it's the European champion it's the North American WCQ like winner. you got like the real Titan matchups the whole yeah, way through yeah. it, was, it was really difficult but it was really fun like, I played the winner round one um, I broke twice and like he killed me but he was a really cool guy he got me to sign his Aqua Dolphin I was, I was like <laughs> yes <laughs> just because oh, you just become the man That's of good. the Aqua Dolphin That's good but, Yeah Yeah right. um, Yeah I think it's it, it's weird because yeah just expand on the point we just said like like you've probably not played anyone that you know yet in the tournament or is that not true have you played someone that's like well known yet i played the guy who was came second at the Prague that raf won Raf right, okay. Raven. but the, the guy the 60 card guy yeah i played yeah, him he was yes. playing 60 card um, dino elias uh yeah elias is yeah he? Him. And but like at Worlds, your round one was the, the world, world champion, champion. <laughs> and then round two was probably someone equally um, as good. 
top four of NAWCQ. Yeah, exactly. Ex exactly. So it's it, and it probably only got it's worse. It's a great from way there. to get good very quickly, though, right? In that kind of yeah. Place, yeah I mean, like, if you test it with them all the time, uh, it's really insane. Yeah. We, we have huge announcements. We got, we got to wait a bit. Now you still have the right opportunity to attend. We'll just to give it a Mega second. Mega LLDS qualifier, Dragon Duel, on the Mali event to win awesome prize points for our prize wall. If you want to attend a giant card event, please find your way to the public event stage, fill in the registration slip, and queue up. There we okay, go. Okay, there we go. Sorry, we got to. Once again, mega regional <laughs> registration is closed now. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Hilarious. Mega regional is closed. Mega so, regional is yeah, closed. You just sign a slip and you can get in, apparently. We've got a speaker that's right above, it's part of the venue. We can't change that. Um, Anyway, yeah, I think so. we were coming to the end anyway. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any closing notes, any shout outs, or anyone you want to say hi to? Uh, shout out to Tim, Omar, Brad, Jawad, and Jake, anyone from the UK. Right. Shout out to Tom Payne for commentating. Right. He's, doing a reg he's doing a great job. Yeah. He is. Yeah, shout he out is. to Bowden for the deck. Yeah. All right. Well, that was it. Uh, we had some words from Luke Parks. He enjoyed Worlds. That's what I took from that. Yeah. So, we're going to be right back with round 11. 11. Oh. Of 12. Oh. 11 of 12. Of the Swiss rounds here at YCS Retract. See you guys soon.